Hi there, my name is Silas David Hen, and I am from PAN, the Physicians Association for Nutrition. Welcome to our first study telegram. From now on, this is where we bring you close to the latest, the most interesting, and the most groundbreaking scientific publications in evidence based clinical nutrition. Today, we're going to start with a topic, specifically a food item, that has been quite polarizing in recent years. The topic is coconut oil. At the beginning of March, a study entitled The Effect of Coconut Oil Consumption on Cardiovascular Risk Factors was published in the journal Circulation, which is one of the highest ranked journals in the category of cardiology and cardiovascular medicine and is published by the prestigious American Heart Association. Now, the kind of study is what makes this really interesting to look at in more detail because this is a systematic review and meta-analysis of clinical trials and actually all but two of them were randomized control trials. So this is right up in the highest levels of evidence available. That being said, let's go through the study and see what information it provides. Well, first the authors give us a little bit of background information. They say that diet high in saturated fatty acids raise the LDL cholesterol concentrations and may increase the risk of cardiovascular disease as compared with polyunsaturated fatty acids. However, the popularity of coconut oil has soared in recent years because of its purported health effects, even though coconut fat contains about 90% saturated fat and dietary guidelines generally recommend the restriction of such fats. I can imagine that a lot of you are now thinking, what about medium chain triglycerides? What about lauric acid? Well, don't worry, we will get back to that later. Results from clinical trials on the effects of coconut oil consumption on lipid profiles have been mixed with some studies, three of them, but not all, 13 of them, suggesting that consumption of coconut fat reduces serum cholesterol levels compared with non-tropical vegetable oils. In addition to lipid concentration, coconut oil has been suggested to alleviate inflammation, improve glucose homeostasis, and reduce body fatness. So the authors of the study we're looking at now took this research gap as a motivation to conduct a systematic review and updated meta-analysis of clinical trials to evaluate the effects of coconut oil consumption on cardiovascular risk factors. Now, because there is so much interesting data to cover in the results of the discussion, we will go over the methods rather quickly. If you're interested in reading up on the methods, of course you can do so. The link to the study is in the description box below. The authors use PRISMA guidelines, which involve a very useful 27-item checklist that supports authors of systematic review and meta-analyses to standardize reporting and improve transparency in scientific research. As a side note, you can also use PRISMA guidelines in order to check whether a systematic review and meta-analysis that you're reading was actually well conducted. After searching all relevant databases and then screening their 873 search results, the authors ended up with 16 eligible articles, including 17 trials and 730 participants. To objectify study quality, they made use of the Jadat scale, which in this case ranged from 0 to 5 points and evaluated randomization, double blinding, and handling of withdrawals. And as mentioned before, 15 out of the 17 trials were actually randomized control trials, and additionally 10 of them had medium to high quality. Concerning the oils in use, most commonly the coconut oil comparison was either soybean, olive, safflower, or canola oil. The different study protocols resulted in a variation of oil intake between 2 to 25% of total energy intake. And this is exactly the reason why it's so interesting to look at a well-conducted systematic review and meta-analysis like this one, because that way we can get a better overview of the actual balance of evidence. That being said, let's have a look at the results. Compared with non-tropical oils, coconut oil significantly increased total cholesterol by about 40 mg per deciliter, increased LDL cholesterol by 10, about 10 mg per deciliter, and increased HDL cholesterol by 4 mg per deciliter. This translates to an 8.6% increase in LDL and a 7.8% increase in HDL cholesterol. And these effects on cholesterol actually remain significant when the non-randomized trials or the weight loss trials are set aside. For the other investigated cardiovascular disease risk factors, coconut oil consumption showed no significant effect on triglycerides, body weight, waist circumference, percent body, percentage body fat, fasting plasma glucose, or C-reactive protein, 
as compared with non-tropical vegetable oils. Now, after having gone through the background, the design and the result of the study, let's have a look at the discussion. The hypercholesterolemic effect of coconut oil intake is probably attributable to its high saturated fat content, lauric, myristic, and palmitic acid, which make up about 70% of coconut oil, all significantly increase LDL cholesterol. The 10.47 mg per deciliter increase in LDL cholesterol, resulting from the replacement of non-tropical vegetable oils with coconut oil, may translate to a 6% increase in the risk of major vascular events and a 5% increase in the risk of coronary heart disease mortality. Now, why is this important? Why should we care about those results? Well, for decades now, cardiovascular disease has been the number one cause of death globally, currently killing about 18 million people a year. And replacing just 5% of energy intake from saturated fat with polyunsaturated fat, so you know, omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids from non-tropical vegetable oils, has been associated with 13 and 10% lower risk of coronary heart disease in epidemiological studies and clinical trials, respectively. On the other hand, in this study, coconut oil consumption did not only increase LDL, but also HDL cholesterol concentrations, which has been consistently associated with lower CHD risk in epidemiological studies. However, the authors point out, recent research findings have cast doubt upon the causality of this association. If we look at people with genetic predispositions for low HDL cholesterol, they do not appear to have a lower risk for myocardial infarction. Also, if we increase HDL cholesterol pharmacologically, that does not result in lower risk for CHD mortality, myocardial infarction, or stroke. It's actually now hypothesized that the cardioprotective effect of dietary unsaturated fat compared with saturated fat is the increase in HDL subspecies containing apolipoprotein E, which has been shown to facilitate all steps of reverse cholesterol transport. Now, reverse cholesterol transport is the cholesterol transport from extrahepatic tissues, such as the arteries, back to the liver. And it's a key mechanism in the prevention and reversal of atherosclerotic plaques. Therefore, while saturated fat intake increases HDL concentration per se more than unsaturated fat, average HDL concentrations alone may not be effective in reflecting HDL function or CHD risk. In contrast, the role of LDL in promoting atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease has been consistently demonstrated based on findings from Mendelian randomization studies and different LDL cholesterol-lowering treatments. Another point that the authors touch on is the fact that there are some indigenous populations with low rates of heart disease while consuming high amounts of coconut oil. However, they say, these findings must be treated with caution because of the observational and ecological nature of these studies with a high potential for confounding by the traditional diets of these populations, which typically contain high amounts of fish, a source for long-chain omega-3 fatty acids, and low amounts of processed food, which means that they must just have eaten a lot of fiber. Now it has been suggested that polyphenols in unrefined coconut oil may be beneficial for improving inflammation and glucose homeostasis. Unfortunately, most studies did not provide detailed information on the type of coconut oil they used, so the authors were unable to conduct a corresponding analysis. Now, as I said at the beginning, let's talk about medium-chain triglycerides. A common argument made in favor of coconut fat consumption is that it's composed of medium-chain fatty acids, MCFAs, which are the fatty acids found in MCTs. MCFAs are rapidly absorbed by the portal vein and may therefore play a more important role as a source of energy via beta-oxidation than in cholesterol synthesis. Now that's true, but medium-chain triglycerides that show these effects, such as caprylic or capric acid, saturated fatty acids with 8 and 10 carbon atom chains respectively, make up only about 7% and 5% of coconut oil. However, lauric acid, which has a 12 carbon atom chain and comprises about half of the total fatty acids of coconut oil, is chemically classified as an MCFA, but may not biologically act like other MCFAs. Lauric acid is largely absorbed and transported by chylomicrons similar to long-chain fatty acids. As a matter of fact, only 25 to 30 percent of lauric acid is absorbed through the portal vein, which means that 70 percent of lauric acid is actually packaged into chylomicrons and transported, just like the rest, 
of all the other long-chain saturated fatty acids, such as myristic and palmitic acid, that have been demonstrated to significantly increase LDL cholesterol if only 1% of dietary energy from carbohydrate is replaced with them. Now, if we take a look at their amounts in coconut oil, we can see that about 25% of it is made up of myristic and palmitic acid. The authors summarize their findings by saying that the results raise concern about high consumption of coconut oil because it significantly increases LDL cholesterol as compared with non-tropical vegetable oils. While coconut oil intake also increases HDL cholesterol concentrations, efforts to reduce CBD risk by increasing HDL cholesterol have been unsuccessful. There was also no evidence of benefits of coconut oil over non-tropical vegetable oils for adiposity or glycemic or inflammatory markers. Therefore, coconut oil should not be viewed as a healthy oil for cardiovascular disease risk reduction and limiting coconut oil consumption because of its high saturated fat content is warranted. Now, I can imagine that for a lot of you out there who really enjoy using coconut oil, these results might sound disappointing or maybe even annoying. Now, let me first of all say that maybe in the future research will be conducted on high polyphenolic coconut oil and maybe we will have different results then. But until then, let me suggest another point of view. These results help us to understand what kind of foods impair and improve cardiovascular health, what to eat and not to eat in order to prevent and reverse our number one killer and thus empower us even a bit more to take our health into our own hands.